Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I am back with the sixth and final Swiss round of the Brooklyn Premier Challenge that I attended last weekend. If you have not seen the previous five games, definitely check them out as they are in a playlist in the description below. Up to this point, I was 4-1, and one, so if I won this last match, I would be guaranteed a spot in the top 8. If I lost, I would be on the bubble, meaning I'd have a chance, depending on how my opponents did, but didn't want to leave it to that, and I rather would just try to get in, you know, by winning the match. But, of course, it's going to be really difficult, because at the last round, you know, you're always going to be playing really solid players. And I was actually matched up with one of my really good friends and a really solid player, Simon Yip. Simon actually played at Worlds in 2011 and made top 4 at Nationals that year. Also got top 8 at Nationals in 20. 2014. Some of you guys may remember seeing him on stream against Ashton Cox. He was rocking a really cool Mega Blastoise team. So, uh, you know, it's never fun to play as such a good friend and such a good player in the last round, and it's kind of bittersweet because I knew we'd probably be in for a great game, but at the same time, you know, chances are not both of us would make it to uh, the top eight. So, he actually had a really cool team. You see the four he brought Towel Flame, Xerneas, Kyogre, and Flygon. Yes, that's a Flygon, and it, <laughs> spoilers, it does put in some work in this game. Uh, and the two he did not bring were Bronzong and Kangaskhan. The four that I opted for were Kangaskhan, Cresselia, Groudon, and Amoongus. This time, not bringing in Palkia since uh, he did have Kyogre and Xerneas, and Amoongus loves facing against that legendary duo. I knew if I eliminated Talonflame, then Amoongus could put things to sleep and just do damage, even if I didn't have Trick Room up. So, Palkia here could have been helpful, but against this team composition, I, you know, Xerneas is already as difficult to deal with as is, so I figured Amoongus would at least give me another option for it. And he did have two team modes. He could Tailwind, most likely, with Talonflame or he could Trick Room, so I was kind of scared about that. Didn't know who was faster between my Groudon and Kyogre, so you know, I decided I'd play it by ear based off what his lead matchup is. So, without further ado, let's jump into this final battle. If you've enjoyed these battles and if you enjoyed this one, please share support by leaving a like in the video. I would really appreciate it. So, I decided to lead with Kangaskhan and Cresselia, which has really been the safest lead matchup and option, and he leads with his Talonflame and Xerneas, so I know he has a bunch of options right now. He can go straight for the Brave Bird onto Kangaskhan and the Geomancy, and what that'll allow him to do is even if I set up Trick Room, then he can just Brave Bird me the next turn. So, I figure that he's probably gonna Geomancy, so instead of that, I just actually go for the Fake Out onto Talonflame and the Trick Room. Lo and behold, he doesn't protect with either of his Pokemon or Switch Out, so I do get some free damage off there against Talonflame with Fake Out. This does mean that I'm able to get the Trick Room up as he goes for the Geomancy with his Xerneas, but in retrospect, the better play for me to have made there was actually just to go straight for the Helping Hand Double Edge play with Xerneas. That play's a little bit risky because Xerneas outspeeds Kangaskhan when it isn't Mega Evolved, so had he gone for the Brave Bird and the Moonblast play on a Kangaskhan, I actually could have just lost there because I opted to play really risky. So that's why I did go for the fake out play, but the thing is if I were predict predicting the Geomancy, you know, Double Edge would have made a little bit more sense. I do set up Trick Room successfully, but keep in mind that Talonflame still has Gale Wings, so Brave Bird will still go before Kangaskhan's Double Edge. I figure here he might predict me to target down the Talonflame, and I'm like, okay, you know what, YOLO, let's just target down the Xerneas, but unfortunately it doesn't pay out as he does smartly enough go for the Protect here. And Talonflame actually goes for the Sword Stance as opposed to the Brave Bird, which is even scarier because now I'm staring down a plus 2 Talonflame and a plus 2 Xerneas. This next turn though, I go for the Helping Hand play once again, and I actually opt for the Sucker Punch here onto Talonflame, uh, making sure like he's not able to get a Brave Bird off. I figured he might want a Brave Bird, Kangaskhan, and Moonblast the Cresselia, and you know, a lot of times players just forget that Sucker Punch goes before the Brave Bird because Trick Room is up, so that actually works out perfectly, and Talonflame is rendered completely useless. I'm also really happy to see because he Moonblasts my Cresselia as opposed to Kangaskhan, so that means that I stick around for a bit longer with my Kangaskhan, and that means that I can actually just go for a Double Edge play once again supported by Helping Hand. Now, he brings in the Kyogre though, which is pretty bad for me because Kyogre is going to be able to outspeed Kangaskhan under the Trick Room. So this next turn I have a pretty important decision to make of whether I want to switch out into Groudon or not. Instead I actually opt for the Helping Hand Double Edge play once again, and this is really risky because he could have just protected with the Xerneas, but I'm really happy to see he didn't protect. He also unfortunately misses the Origin Pulse on Kangaskhan. Now the reason why I went for the Helping Hand Double Edge play was because I knew Origin Pulse or Water Spout would have knocked me out, but I was really playing on a risk there assuming that he would attack with the Xerneas, and I figured, you know, he probably wasn't expecting that because it's highly likely I'd switch out into my Groudon or my Palkia, and if I could pick up the knockout there onto Xerneas, that would be excellent. So, because he missed Origin Pulse, I actually, you know, get to hang around with Kangaskhan a bit longer, which is huge, but I figured even if I, you know, we traded knockouts there, 
then Groudon and Amoongus would be able to beat whatever he had in the back. I actually thought he'd have Kangaskhan or uh, Bronzong, not the Flygon, which he brought out, which is probably the worst Pokemon I could have seen, but I knew that Amoongus in the back had enough redirection support that I could just, you know, Rage Powder Eruption, and uh, Amoongus being so specially bulky, I thought could maybe even take a combination of two Earth Powers and Ice Beams. But, you know, I'm definitely really happy that the last turn played out the way it did, because he didn't protect with Xerneas, picked up the knockout onto it, and now I know the weather is in my favor. So he smartly enough goes for the protect here with Flygon, making sure I don't pick up any damage, and he realizes that's his win condition. If Flygon goes down, then Groudon just wins against Kyogre, especially with an Amoongus on the side. So he protects, and Trick Room now does expire. So the scary thing about Flygon is that it's actually base 100 as well, so we speed tie, and he actually picks up the knockout there onto Kangaskhan. Not what I was anticipating, I think a better move would have actually just have been Rage Powder Double Edge, because once Flygon goes down, I outright win the game. Uh, he misses an Origin Pulse there once again, uh, and the reason why I opted for Origin Pulse as opposed to Ice Beam is in case I did go for the Rage Powder play, so smart play by him to cover all my options. But at this point, I figure as long as he doesn't get like two one-turn wake-ups with both Flygon and Kyogre, and get immensely lucky with crits and freezes, I should be able to seal this game up. So he takes his first turn of sleep there with Flygon, and I actually go straight for the Eruption. Uh, it's actually pretty important to note here that my Eruption went before his Kyogre, so I actually speed tied there, and I didn't go for the Rage Potter, and he goes for the Ice Beam, as you'll see here, targeting down the Groudon. So it actually would have been really scary if he if he won the speed tie and got the crit there as well as you know without the crit that's not as bad you see how much damage eruption is still doing to these two pokemon that resist it but with the crit with the speed tie and with him winning uh or waking up really early with both pokemon i actually had a decent chance to lose this one but flygon takes another turn of sleep and i know that that means the game is basically over it was a little bit risky of me honestly to just go for the eruption since if he wasn't min speed he'd be guaranteed to outspeed me but i figured even if he outsped me and got an ice beam off it wouldn't be too bad but uh, the crit there made me realize afterwards wow uh, it was a little bit fortunate there so he takes another turn of sleep there with Kyogre and I know at this point Kyogre doesn't have enough firepower to deal with both Groudon and Amoongus so the game is basically won in my favor but a really really scary match I honestly thought I had lost this one after the first two turns when his Xerneas was smart enough to protect but me going all in and trying to knock out the Xerneas that one turn with the helping hand double edge play really 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 worked out uh we had a bunch of speed ties here in the end between Kyogre and Groudon and between Flygon and Kangaskhan, but fortunately enough, it was able to work out in my favor, and I'm able to win the final round in a 2-0 victory. Probably one of the closest matches, if not the closest match we had all of Swiss. So that does mean that I move on to 5-1 and one and ensured me a spot in the top 8. Fortunately enough, Simon actually also made the top 8. He was the one player with two losses who made it, so I was really happy about that. Couldn't have asked for a better outcome, and you know, for the match to be somewhat haxy in my favor, I'm glad that he was able to make it in the end as well so in the next couple of days i'll be going over my top cut matches if you're interested in seeing it all streamlined for example two or three games all together from a best of three set as opposed to me doing individual videos definitely let me know and you know i can take breaks in between to talk about my mindset and whatnot as well so let me know whether you guys would rather prefer longer matches or you know longer videos because i string all the matches together or whether you'd still rather just see them individually uh because that way you know it's not as long these videos are a lot shorter than you know the videos i normally produce so i figure it's easier for you guys to watch on a daily basis so definitely let me know in the comments below i am very curious but hope you guys enjoyed the first six rounds through swiss you'll be seeing the top cut matches which are best of three sets in the future that's gonna be it for this one hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys next time leave a like as always if you did and peace